Hello Ducks fans and hockey fans in Orange County, California and around the world. Hope you guys are having a good day. Having a positive one. Staying safe, staying healthy, and keeping each eyes together as company. Uh, this week, our team uh, participated in the first ever NHL virtual draft for two days, on the Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. Originally, the draft would have been held in, on, in Montreal, but due to unfortunate circumstances, it was canceled, and lo and behold, we are here. This week also marked, very uh, also marked, uh, the, the free agent fr frenzy, or <laughs> more likely a free agent uh, drama, if you consider the fact that it's most of the Ducks are, are, are always have this wait and see approach. When it comes to free agency, I mean they're basically, basically bargain bargain hunters, in the past. But, anyways, let's get down to business, shall we? For two days, our ducks have uh, made selections, uh, important selections for our team. That, uh, in my personal opinion, would basically uh, f focus on the best player available, but also this year we focus on. The uh, positional needs for our team, and um, my reaction when the Ducks made the selections was um, I wasn't surprised, nor was I um, like uh, disappointed because we know that the position our Ducks in we needed to address any everything from power play to blue line depth to depth on the right wing and so on and so on so it, it just it just it just didn't surprise me at all and um, looking at back then but not looking back but looking at all through the the, the eight selections our ducks have made from the round one until round seven which the ducks made a late trade with Columbus I personally feel the ducks have made uh, great selections and these are selections that are for the long-term future of our team and for the sport of hockey in Orange County, California. I mean, you know, the first round was very telling. I mean, very telling at the least because uh, I was not surprised personally that the Ducks selected Jamie Drysdale at six overall. I mean, let's put it this way. He is a right-hand defenseman. And uh, the Ducks need a right-hand defenseman, so they picked him. And uh, he was my second choice, personally, behind uh, Marco Rossi and, uh, and ahead of Anton Liddell. Yes, I, <laughs> I was hoping Ducks would take Anton Liddell if they decided not to take Rossi or Drysdale. But in my personal opinion, Drysdale is a great choice, a perfect fit for our team, and um, someone who I believe in a few years can help improve the power play and give it that shot in the arm. I mean, the Ducks power play was, man, <laughs> it was dismal. I mean, you, you, all, you all can agree to that, you know, watching the team live and or watching it on TV or even hearing it on internet radio. I mean, the power play was a mess. I <laughs> mean, it was. Um, making the selection at the 27th overall, the Ducks selected Jacob Perrault uh, from uh, Sarnia Sting, a right winger who is basically have uh, a lot of upside, a lot of upside, and uh, you know I, I I'm not going to to um, bore you to death on his scouting report on what he can do, but uh, uh, looking at the highlights of both him and Drysdale, I believe that they, they can mesh well in the duck system of hockey, and. Um, also, one note, he is the son of Yannick Perot. Now, if many of you guys know who he is, Yannick Perot was, a, was one of the best face-off uh, forwards in the NHL. I mean, you know, he was the best face-off forward the Montreal Canadiens had during the 1990s. So, if you Google his name, you know who I'm talking about. Now, from round two to seven, the Ducks selected uh, Sam Coglian, uh, not Cog uh, Colangelo. Uh, right wing uh, from uh, Chicago Steel, an American, 
Uh, Ian Moore, a right-handed defenseman. Timo Nickel, a right-handed defenseman, too, as well. Now, round number five. This one was really surprised me. Uh, the Ducks selected at the 129th overall in the fifth round. Artyom Gilmolov. I apologize if I, if I messed that pronunciation, but a Russian who's playing with Akbar's Kazan from the KHL. Uh, running out in um, six, round six, the Ducks selected a center, Albin Sebsvik from Sweden, of course. Bob Murray loves his uh, Swedish players. And the final selection on round seven, a, um, the Ducks made a trade which with Columbus for, for picks. The Ducks selected Ethan Bowen from BCHL at the 207th overall. Now, looking at the stats of all eight of these picks, uh, I would have to give the Ducks a an A. An A because, let's be very honestly clear about one thing. There was many, many things that, that I, uh, uh, I saw. And I made a little, uh, little uh, mental notes. And I wrote them down, personally. I mean, I, I have them right over here. <laughs> I'm reading them for, to you guys. So, uh, one, uh, the draft was a focus on right-hand shots. Right-hand shots, mostly on uh, the right-hand defenseman and right wing. I mean, basically, those two positions, the Ducks have been have less uh, right-handed shooters, both on blue line and on the right wing. Now, if many guys have known, if you look at the Ducks roster last season and the year before that, they had more left-handers than right-handers, and especially on the blue line, the defensive core. I mean, Hampus Lindholm is, is, is a left-handed shot. Cam Fowler, left-hand shot. Um, the only left-handed, like, right-handed shot was a guy named Josh Manson, and Eric Branson was now traded to Ottawa for a fifth-round pick. Uh, the other left-hander was Jakob Larson, and signing Cody Curran from the SHL Swedish Hockey League it was a little bit of a confusing because he's a left-handed shooting guy. So, I mean, the focus for the Ducks was basically on the right-hand shots on the right wing and the right-hand defense, which was kind of, which, which didn't surprise me a bit. I mean, basically, it, you needed to balance out the positions. Because both those positions uh, were our, our team's Achilles heel. There was our Achilles heel that really showed in several of the games when the Ducks lost. And uh, you know what I'm talking about. You guys know what I'm talking about. And I know it because I've watched many games and I watched the, the, the recaps and I've watched the reviews. I've listened to some games and... Yeah, and you know, yeah, I, I don't have I don't have ducks, to, like tele telecast here from where I'm from. But then again, hey, you, you gotta do what you can. So another Tim bit uh, was which I which I found pretty interesting was that the Ducks during the eight selections our Ducks drafted, uh, they drafted the first Austrian-born player in this year's draft, uh, Theo Nickel, a right-hand defenseman who is now playing with the Drunkville Volters in the QMJHL. Now, I would have been getting tickets to see him if they, he was coming in to play at Halifax Moosehead, but due in part of the pandemic, and the league is splitting the divisions into, into many leagues, it's, it's kind of hard. And also, the tickets from where I'm from is very pricey. I mean, $21 plus tax. I'd rather watch it on YouTube or something like that, but, hey, picking a guy, I mean, from, who was born and raised in Austria, I mean, says a lot of things. I mean, it's, it's the first for our ducks. It's a milestone first, and, and most of you are wondering, okay, oh, Moose, this is, well, what's the point? Well, the ducks see something in Theo Nicol, who I believe can turn out to be a long-term project for our team, if he develops well, and uh, he's not going to jump into the NHL just like that, like the snap of your fingers. I mean, you, you, need, you need time, and I'm sure that all of these eight players, including like Theo Nickel and Jamie Drysdale, 
the, the Ducks will be patient with them. I mean, they have been patient with their previous prospects who developed well and became the Ducks regulars in the past 27 years. So they will develop well. And, um, hey, I, uh, the pick is good in my, in my book for Theo Mickle. Uh, let's see. The Ducks drafted the uh, first Russian in 11 years. Now, what I'm going to say about this is that the last time the Ducks drafted a Russian was in 2009, where they selected a goalie in the later rounds named Igor Bobkov. A uh, 6 4 4 big guy. Really big guy. But the last time the Ducks drafted a Russian in the first round was in 2001, and that was like 19 years ago. So you do do math, and you know that when it comes to the Russians and first rounders, they, they back off. They just know. But I'm guessing that from reading from what the scouting reports and from what from some of the comments is, the Ducks, especially the Ducks scouting staff, they really like this guy's, uh, Arturum Gallimov's, uh, stats. They, I mean, I'll leave, I'll leave a link down below to, uh, to his highlights. And he has a lot of energy, a lot of energy. And when he's, when he's going to the net and when he's scoring those goals, hey, it's the effort that counts. And if the Ducks can find a way to get him over from Russia to North America without any BS and politics, hey, I'm all for it in a way. I'm all for him to be be ready and get him to go. But but the Ducks will will always be patient. They have always be patient with the prospects when they drafted them in the first and later rounds. And that's the main thing. Uh, another theme the Ducks uh, in the Ducks draft class and when they were drafting that I find was that out of the eight prospects the day Ducks, Ducks drafted, five out of the eight prospects were right-handed. What, the, what does that say to you? That says to you they're evening out the shooting, uh, the shooting ring, uh, positions. You know, mostly you see some of the left-handed shooters the Ducks have being in the center the left wing, they'll be put in the right wing, that make them into two-way forwards, two-way forwards that can literally give the Ducks a balance approach, a balance attack, so the Ducks can can, can have like like very natural right wing shooters take the shot, take the slap shot from the blue line, that sort of thing. As with the left wing, and as with the right hand and left hand defenseman, and that's one thing about it. That's one thing about that makes it. So, all in all, I would have to give the Ducks uh, draft, this draft class of 2020, in these uncertain times, I'll have to give it an A+, plus, an OK in my book. That's, that's an A-OK, -okay, okay? An A. I've said it, like, again, but hey, I like it. I, I like uh, the selection from, from Jimmy Drysdale to Ethan Bowen. And that's that's the main thing about it. Another thing I like to like to um, add to the video to the to, to the video right now is uh, the Ducks free agency. I mean, put it this way, um, I did not. I was expecting not a lot. We were expecting not a lot. I mean, most of you guys were all expecting a lot because the Ducks have a history of a wait and see approach when it came to the Ducks and free agency. They're not big spenders. They're always saving money and developing within with their prospects, with their young guns in, in the system, honing their skills in San Diego and now Tulsa, Oklahoma, which would be very interesting to see, considering the Ducks have an abundance of forwards and defensemen prospects and goalie prospects. I mean, they, they just recently sent at least five of their, their, their prospects to Europe to hone their skills, to make sure they don't have any rust in them anyway. I mean, right now, I mean, the Ducks have signed uh, right-hand defenseman Kevin Shattenkirk to a three-year deal worth $3.9 million. I mean, three years. Hey, that's, good. that's a good deal in my book. That's a good deal in my book. I mean, last year, the Ducks couldn't get him because Shattenkirk wanted to go to Tampa Bay to chase the Stanley Cup, and now he's a Stanley Cup champion. And having a right-hand defenseman, 
uh, in the blue line can, I mean, it improves the power play. It improves the power play by leaps and bounds. Add that with Jamie Drysdale, who is uh, proven to be an effective defenseman. And, and if they can, if they can like pair them together, they can. Shattenkirk can mentor Drysdale. I mean, that's that's the thing, because you got to have a veteran to come in and help a 19-year-old Drysdale. I mean, Drysdale's not going to come in and just snap the fingers and, and become a power play quarterback. Shannon Kirk was brought in because the Ducks need veteran experience on an equal par of youth. In that way that the transitioning, the line, will not break. We've seen it before with uh, Jaguar and Hiller, and Aber and, and Jaguar. We've seen that before with uh, Tamo Solani and, and, and Getzloff and, and so on. I can make, I can make a, a lot of examples. So. So Shan Kirk comes in. He's on the right hand on the defensive pair like side. You have, you have Shan Kirk, you have Josh Manson, and you have Yanni Hakaba. Three right handers in the position for the of uh, the defense I mean, defense core, blue line. I mean, it's good. It's good. It's really good. It's really a much of a good it's a good way to give this team some veteran stability. Because when you got a lot of green last year on the blue line, excuse me, and on the forward areas, it, 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 just, it just shows. So uh, The Ducks also brought back uh, Derek Grant. Again, for three years, 1.5 million. I got nothing against uh, Grant coming back. I mean, the Ducks have a history of uh, bringing former players back. Think, think Stu Grimson, think Francois Beauchemin, Ilya Brzgalov, uh, Tamo Solani is the best known example. Um, I can name more than that, but I mean, to me, these two signings is. I gotta say, it, 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 it's good. It's it's a good one. It, it just shows the Ducks are, are are not going to this time around. Even though that with with a lot of things going on with pandemic and, and craziness and, and and unpredictability and uncertainty, the Ducks are not going to rest on their laurels again. So, whether the season starts. In January for us, which I highly doubt it, it's going to be a short season. It's better. It should should be a short season, considering the fact that how would you like like put in eighty two games in three months? I will cover that in the next video because eighty two games in, in three months, you might as well you might as well have San Diego Gulls and the Tulsa Oilers or, or or the prospects on standby because you're going to have a lot of burnout players. On the Ducks and the 30 other NHL teams. So, I am very pleased and happy the Ducks drafted the players I feel will fit in and help improve the team, strengthen the depth. And I'm happy the Ducks made these signs. So, I mean, it's good. This is very good. Until we wait until the Ducks' 28th season and the NHL season begins become official it, 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 we would have to count down and wait and sometimes waiting will be the toughest part of the test of our patience until then I'll see you guys soon peace out